So the most common situational fear is separation anxiety. And uh, you're going to see that that statement that I have written down there, many of these dogs have been subjected to dysfunctional early life experiences. Um, I'll show you all of the evidence there is for that. Um, you know, there's some dogs who do show it and some dogs who don't. And it's not just a matter of temperament. It's a matter of, well, it's temperament that's being created by, oftentimes by adverse experiences. And there are other things. We're going to talk about some other phobias at the end. It's not going to be all about separation anxiety. I'm going to even do a little case report with you towards the end. And I'm afraid towards the end, too, I'm going to just run through a whole gamut of medicines that you can use. That's why I'm sorry the Canadian guys aren't here. Um, there's fear of the crate. There's fear of the car. There's fear of vet visits that we mentioned yesterday. There's fear of being in a closed space, whatever that is. There's fear of being in an open space. There's fear of the whole lot. You know, so we've got all of these different components. Uh, what separation anxiety is, um, and again, it's uh, what scientists do is they try and box things up, and sometimes there are divisions inside the boxes, but um, it is uh, severe distress by s experienced by sensitive dogs um, when they're distanced from a group member. Uh, we did find out that there is no sex predilection, which you might imagine, because this is a fearful condition. So, you know, boys and girls equally likely to get this. A funny thing there was, um, which I can't quite explain, sexually intact dogs, there weren't very many of them, but they were three times less likely to exhibit separation anxiety, which is hard to fathom. Uh, there was another interesting finding. This is just like kind of almost incidental, did you know facts, but you know, it turns out that uh, dogs from homes with um, a single uh, adult were two or three times more likely to show separation anxiety. And, you know, that sort of stands to reason in a way. I mean, I can understand that. When, the, when you've only got one loved one, one attachment figure, and that person goes, you're going to spend more time alone. You're more likely to develop this lack of confidence, unable to stand on your own four feet. Uh, and, and it's comorbid. There's that word again I said. Uh, that means it coexists with. There's a very strong association with uh, noise phobia, including thunderstorm phobia, that we'll talk about this afternoon, um, which implies the dog has a an anxious temperament, right? Because, you know, we're talking about the triangle of fear, and we don't only have things in the right-hand corner, which is the situational anxiety. We also have 50% of the guys who have this problem in the right-hand corner also have the problem in the left-hand corner, which is noise phobia. Homecoming, um, pick up the treats, low-key greeting, only respond to the dog when he's calm. And the goal is to even out the emotional roller coaster of life, because these dogs have two periods of their day there's an extreme down when you leave and an extreme up when you come home. And the whole goal of treatment is to even out the emotional roller coaster by making leaving an enjoyable experience and making coming home a more even experience. You're trying to even out that curve. If you think about it one way is what I'm trying to do is, if I, you know those machines that you see at the airports and whatever, where it's like grab, goes along like that and it goes in, picks something up and drops it if you're lucky? I'm trying to take stuff out of the time when you're with the dog, lift it out, and drop it into the time when you're away. So that it's not just nothing. It's not, they're gone. I'm alone. What was Ian saying yesterday about, would you like to go and be shut in that closet for 10 hours? The answer is no. So we try and make it entertaining, fun-filled.